And here we go. Here we go. We are live from Palm Springs, California with Exploring the Illuminati Occult Part 32 OTO, the sect that took over Freemasonry. This is a very interesting subject, a subject I lived uh, myself very close up uh, once upon a time. There will be a lot to discuss. Uh, Christy, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Okay, so you are ready for the show? Mm -hmm. hmm. Hi everyone, Leo and Christy Zagami. We are uh, presently promoting also volume nine of my confessions. So we want to thank all the people who have purchased this uh, great book, which I have here behind me. Tomorrow I need to purchase a few more copies. And I gave all my copies away. Uh, so Leo Lion Zagami, Confessions of an Illuminati, volume nine is my latest book. You can also uh, read it without having read anything else by Leo Lyons again. So it's a great opportunity to start uh, knowing me as an author. And Chris is kind of like really uh, uh, waiting for mentioning the sponsors because without them, guys, we will not have a show. And we want to thank, of course, those who sponsor both uh, anonymously and publicly. But let's hear from Christy the names of the people who will like the names mentioned for today's show. <laughs> okay, so we got we have a lot of names this week. Thank you very much. So we have a 90-minute show today, and we will continue with the 90-minute shows for the rest of the month. Um, you still need to buy the books, though, <laughs> so hopefully we'll sell some books. Um, thank you very much. Here's everybody who was so generous and donated to the show. Daniel Estes, Jerry, and if I get your name wrong, I'm really sorry, but I'll try to get it right. Jerry Romju, Kirsten Ropp, Donald Beach, Holly Orris. Thomas Birmingham, Joe Linford, Bruce, of course, and Harvest Simon. You guys are awesome. You really helped the show this week. And you deserve an applause. You deserve <laughs> thank you. We thank you. We, we will uh, now put on for you an applause, which is half. Y'all thank you. You'll thank you, both <laughs> us and, of course, all the viewers of our show uh, today. That was like really said, nice of you guys. Thank you. We will be investigating further mysteries surrounding this time the OTO. The yay, yay, yay. We will of course uh, repeat the names of the sponsor at the end of oh, the broadcast the end, okay. well actually it's in the middle because they deserve it and they have really That's helped us out uh, yes but they have really helped us out especially with uh, the summer bills we have around here in palm springs uh, with the electricity pumping bills that are out of this world so we really thank our sponsors that give us uh, the opportunities to carry on this mission and uh, of course uh, i will uh, put uh, on the screen also the various ways they can uh, in some way you know donate uh, the, the most known ways uh, go find me we have also those who use cash app that i will put here on the screen for those interested in supporting us our GoFundMe account. Uh, thank you so much in advance for all those people who want to support us. Uh, we will be delivering more shows every week live at uh, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Facebook and YouTube, and then later on also on band.video. So this show is a very particular show, guys. It's a very particular show. Now can we dance, finally? You always say, let's dance, and then I start to dance, and then you don't do anything, and then I feel stupid. Mm. Like, and now we're dancing. Okay, dance, dance, dance. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what are we discussing today? Today we are discussing 
the Ordo Templi Orientis, which is uh, the ancient order of Oriental Templars, uh, which uh, uh, it's a modern school of magic uh, connected to the Illuminati, and they actually don't really make a secret uh, of it, uh, even uh, on their own website. Um, when were they born? Uh, was Alistair Crowley the founder? No, he wasn't. Uh, but he took over definitely this organization. Uh, this organization that uh, was born uh, in the past century, uh, in the earlier 20th century, uh, these minds, these uh, eccentric minds from the esoteric world met up between Austria and Germany and created this organization. And uh, of course, now uh, we are dealing with this organization because it's all over the place. They have uh, literally infiltrated the Freemasonry and they are uh, probably going to stay for a long time, also due to the preparation of modern Freemasons, which don't really excel in, in rooting, the, rooting these people out of their lodges. Eh? lodges. So, uh, okay, it's very important to follow, to follow today's show, because, guys, you will understand finally what is really happening with the OTO in and Freemasonry, and also from a very personal experience myself. So... Christy is a Freemason. She was a Freemason, of course. She, she wanted mm -hmm. to live this initiation, but I never, of course, made her live the initiation of the OTO because... No way. I wouldn't do it anyway. <laughs> you couldn't make me. You'd have to pull my... You could shove things under my nails. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it, and I wouldn't do it. <laughs> okay, and, and you will probably be very <laughs> right. And, uh, definitely, definitely. Uh, why they are so bad? They are so bad because... Uh, in their initiation, uh, the OTO really uh, opens up the chakras one by one, and it kind of exposes you to these entities more and more. Yeah. So, uh, but we need to uh, explain uh, to, to everybody what is the OTO. And I would like to uh, start with an explanation given from the OTO themselves. So let's see what the OTO says about the OTO. Okay. And and then we can comment it together. Welcome to the Leo Zagami show. This is Exploring the Illuminati. Like we said last week, we have interrupted for the moment the various steps that we were following regarding uh, uh, that were uh, picked up from volume nine. We stopped at step four. We still have step five, six, seven. But for those steps, we encourage you to first of all purchase the book uh, and you did and, uh, and actually <laughs> oh, wow. uh, finally, a... finally wow finally. the book's selling like crazy yeah, yeah. now <laughs> so i mean uh, i think that that was well i mean I uh, it was a good i think everybody I think, loved though, it though i think everybody loved it and i think that encouraged people to go and get the book so they can now finally see how it all ends with the uh, final steps, the final three steps that I didn't, uh, of course, uh, uh, presented here in, yeah. on this show. So please. I, I just, um, I think everybody really liked that, you know, you were going the, through the book with them. I think that that whole concept, everybody liked. So maybe like after the book's been around for a while, we'll do it, you know? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's his book so it's up to him no uh, definitely <laughs> maybe we, we, we maybe that that could be a great opportunity uh, but but uh, like uh, like uh, we said it depends also from uh, from from you guys uh, because uh, this book uh, it's, it's a very sp particular book that deserves first of all to be read then of course uh, you can interact with me but first of all, you need to uh, read this book. Uh, and now let's go to the official introduction made by the members, uh, the official uh, you know, authorities of the Ordo Templarientis of what is the Ordo Templarientis, what is the OTO. Uh, this uh, uh, order is a paramasonic order, it's not Freemasonry. Don't confuse it with Freemasonry. It actually doesn't have anything to do with regular Freemasonry. But Alistair Crowley somehow uh, managed to uh, sell it out as something really close to the highest Masonic secret, because that's really was what uh, uh, the people like Theodore Royce, uh, who was the co-founder uh, with another guy called Karl Kerner, wanted to do. They wanted to create an Academia Masonica. 
but then uh, now it has become something different, something completely dedicated, most of all, to the work of Alistair Crowley, to, uh, to how Alistair Crowley is promoted also very much by uh, a sect, because that's what they are, that uh, in, any, in any case, uh, since the 90s has managed aggressively to get control over the whole copyright uh, material of Crowley, and uh, they have done it, of course, since also the 70s with a series of court cases. Earlier on, actually, it was not the OTO involved in the court cases, to tell you the truth. It was the Baser, uh, Samuel Baser company, which I talk about in volume eight, by the way, uh, of my confessions, which actually includes a lot of the early history of the OTO in New York with the Tauti Lodge. Uh, and, and let's see how they present the OTO, then we will verify and fact check what they say. And uh, welcome to the Leo Zagami show. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. The Order of Oriental Templars, better known as Ordo Templi Orientis or merely OTO, is the first religious body to base its work on the law of Thelema. OTO is essentially a vehicle for organizing and mobilizing under the law. Since we can't expect any sort of deus ex machina to take us to a new Jerusalem, the old social forms are obsolete and oppressive, and humans need social contexts in which to temper and express our individual wills. Ooh, okay, so this is, uh, you know, the modern presentation of the Ordo Tempi Orientis. So now we need to understand uh, what is really the Ordo Tempi Orientis, uh, this modern school of magic, uh, which uh, claims to be like the ancient schools of magic. So they, of course, uh, are based mostly today on Crowley's thought, but they, it wasn't originally like that because it wasn't Alistair Crowley who founded this order. So the fact that they are now claiming uh, all this, uh, it's, uh, you know, like it had to be corrected. And because in the last few years, the internet has done so much to really bring uh, documentations, uh, you know, and everything to, even to the common folk that simply goes on Wikipedia and whatnot. Mm -hmm. The OTO himself had to start changing also their approach, making it more credible also their whole lineage claims and all the rest. But what they're saying basically is this, uh, and uh, this is the presentation that the OTO does on their official site, uh, you, you saw, of course, the guy presenting it in, in, in a simple way, but the story that they, of course, introduce when you go right at the history of the U.S. Grand Lodge of the Order of the is first of all, you find, of course, Karl Kerner. Like I explained in Volume 7 of my confessions, so these people are from the Austrian... Swiss and German uh, part of the Illuminati. And uh, I talk, of course, about uh, the OTO from the very start of my confessions from volume one. Uh, Karl Kerner was a pharmacist, uh, was a wealthy Austrian paper chemist, uh, was a student of Freemasonry, uh, was somebody who, of course, was also close to the Theosophical Society, like all the people at the start of this uh, OTO, but also Theosophy function as a playground for modern Satanism, as I say also in my books, I explain also in my books. So, Karl Kerner was the spiritual father of the OTO. He uh, worked to constitute this body of initiates with another important guy, Dr. Franz Hartmann, who was a very important figure in the Theosophical world. He also started that experiment in Mount Verita in Switzerland, the New Age kind of uh, uh, retreat in the mountains. Uh, as you can see, it's discussed as an Academia Masonica. And uh, this is uh, Franz Hartmann. 
this is Carl Kerner, and of course, after there is Theodore Royce. Theodore Royce, one day, in uh, of course, these people, all these people, were connected to John Yarker. Now, if you want to know more about John Yarker, you can go on volume nine of my confessions because I discuss him very uh, profusely uh, in chapter five in relation to his Gnostic beliefs, his Gnostic teachings within uh, his uh, main publication, Arcane Schools, uh, and all the story regarding also him selling uh, his 33, uh, 33rd degree patent to Crowley. But he had really, first of all, given the possibility to Theodore Royce and then to Kerner to constitute this uh, uh, new Academia Masonica by giving them all these uh, charters for various orders and whatnot. But there is a link directly with the Sabbatean Frankism and with the cousin of Jacob Frank. And this uh, uh, link you can find very simply by actually, I mean, of course, uh, you need to be an historian to understand this. But when you scroll down in the history, official history, this is the otousa.org, which includes also the various uh, degrees. By the way, there is also intermedi intermediate degrees. So the degrees here listed might seem 10 or 11 with the outer degree, which is not practiced, but in reality, the degrees are that are practiced are around 20 are actually 21 there is the ones that are known and then there is the intermediary degrees so the system has also a number of degrees that are not uh, communicated uh, uh, officially let's say uh, it says here the OTO although an academia masonic is not a masonic body so as far as secrets are concerned in the sense in which that expression is usually understood and therefore in no way conflicts with or infringes the just privileges of the United Genealogy of England or any genealogy in America or elsewhere, which is recognized by it. Because, of course, at one point, Crowley, when he started to rewrite the rituals of the OTO, and he included his telema stuff, he did it, but he still retained a lot of Masonic elements. And during his period... In Detroit, uh, he was actually called by the Freemasons who told them, listen, you need to, uh, to change these rituals, to make them less obviously Masonic. Um, these people who you're seeing here, this is the founder of the California Lodge, the famous Agape Lodge, which were later on welcome Parsons, that will, of course, then in turn welcome also Hubbard, uh, Wilfred Tarbo Smith, was uh, one of the first people that Crowley really uh, well believed in after he, he, he was left in disappointment by his magical child, this uh, uh, Charles Stafford Jones, uh, who we might discuss later on. Anyway, Carl German became the guy in charge here. Um, he died in the early 60s. But uh, up until Sasha Germer died, actually the OTO was not constituted as a Grand Lodge, which makes us also understand a little bit uh, the situation because uh, this German guy, Karl German, who used to work for the military intelligence during the First World War, uh, ended up in concentration camp because of Aleister Crowley and completed in the concentration camp uh, his uh, conversation with the Holy Guardian Angel. Well, uh, Karl Germer uh, was very strict with the OTO and didn't really want to initiate anybody. Uh, and so this created a lot of problems. However, Crowley had received in the last part of his life this other gentleman, Grady McMarty, who was an American military, who was uh, traveled to Europe on military assignments. He went and visited Crowley on several occasions while on leave. And he became a disciple of Crowley, of course. So it was him who actually uh, took on the OTO later on. And this makes us also think about the links with the military intelligence, you know, that both these gentlemen have this guy here and this other guy. Because it is said that this guy ended up in a concentration camp. But a lot of people suspect that he was actually still a Nazi in disguise and that uh, he was doing some dirty work, uh, maybe there in the camp, maybe some espionage work. In any case, Karl Germer 
uh, was also accused of being very much a Nazi in his beliefs. When instead, uh, Grady McMarty was much more of a leftist, uh, like most of the people within the OTO these days, uh, they have very much progressive values. So, why are they all wearing turbans? Because the caliphate uh, thing, you see, Crowley created this uh, a game of words between California and caliph, uh, caliph, caliphate. Uh, the caliph, uh, he had very much uh, this obsession with Islam and in the initiations of the OTO, in the first initiation of the OTO, is based on the concept that you are basically, as a Minerva, going to meet uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, man of the mountain figure, like Asani Sabah, the Ashashins. So you are basically brought up stairs into a room in which then there is a tent where this guy with a turban will welcome you and then you turn around in the initiation and suddenly you have a bunch of people watching you all wearing this. It's a little bit more dark, much more dark than the, the, the Freemasonry because uh, uh, in the Minerva, you don't have all the, the aprons kind of paraphernalia which comes later on within the OTO. And uh, uh, the word that you're given when you are a Minerva is on, on uh, as Sol Om Mon, as on as the secret name of the sun. Uh, it is definitely interesting how this uh, whole OTO thing then leads towards then the Gnostic mass, which is their central belief, their central practice, their core practice. Now, um, not many people have ever assisted to a Gnostic mass, uh, uh, and so I think uh, that it would be important uh, maybe to, um, to show something. In this case, uh, a Gnostic mass, uh, which uh, uh, a few years ago, was uh, performed by this guy which i talk about here in uh, volume 8 of my confessions uh, regarding new york uh, and the first uh, publications of the oto if you remember christy and uh, uh, i will find it here if i can in the meantime let me see if i can pick up this video. Of course, we are showing here the history of the OTO. We will also uh, discuss the infiltration, though, of the OTO within Freemasonry. Infiltration, which is openly discussed by uh, people that are very high up within Freemasonry. And I have an official document here of the Masonic apologist, I call him uh, Robert Gilbert, which I have collaborated with uh, in England in uh, uh, exposing some members of the OTO who had infiltrated the Società Rosacrucian in Anglia, which was not uh, apparently permitted by the rules because the Società Rosacrucian in Anglia is only for Trinitarian Christians. However, I wanted to show you this, uh, uh, this Gnostic mass because everybody talks about it, of course, here the naked lady on the altar is avoided because otherwise they will probably bring down the video. Oh, okay. uh, so we, we, we have a more uh, kind of mild version of uh, this uh, Gnostic mass, but it will be very interesting for our audience to see some of the passages also because in this case, uh, the people who, as you will see, uh, have made this video are all members of both the OTO and the Ecclesia Gnostica Cattolica, which is the uh, religious arm of the OTO. So there is an introduction here. In reality, it's the Tauti Lodge, but. Uh, here we will have. Very interesting things to see, and I and actually I wanted to uh, show you also for those people who have volume eight of my confessions, uh, if they want to read more about it, of course they can go on volume eight of my confession and read about uh, the New York scene 
uh, which I've discussed also in relationship to uh, my grandmother, the New York scene of the 70s uh, that uh, was filled uh, with people like Wasserman, who is uh, in charge of uh, this ritual. James Basserman died in 2020. You saw, you saw just his name passing by. I think it's him and his wife who uh, are supervising this ritual, uh, this ritual which is, of course, a genuine ritual of the Gnostic Mass, which is the central ritual of the OTO. As somebody is asking, uh, I'm talking about James Basserman, who used to be a high-level member of the OTO until his death in 2020, also author of various books on Freemasonry and the OTO. Welcome. Please enter. Welcome to the Gnostic Mass, hosted by Swirling Star Lodge, and performed under the auspices of the EGC. Alistair Crowley described the Gnostic Mass as the central ritual, public and private, of the OTO. The Mass is a Eucharistic ritual. We ask that all present partake of a wafer of bread and a glass of either wine or grape juice. If you are not prepared to consume the Eucharist today, we thank you for coming and respectfully ask you to leave at this time. During the ritual, you will be asked to give certain signs. First is the step and sign of a man and brother. The step is given by standing with the left foot pointing forward and the right perpendicular to it, with the right heel in the hollow of the left foot. Advance first the left foot and then the right. The sign is made by opening the right hand with the thumb at a 90 degree angle to the extended fingers. The thumb is drawn from the left to right across the throat and then hand dropped to the side. The hailing sign of a magician is performed by raising the left arm at a right angle to the shoulder and elbow. Your hand is open and the thumb forms another right angle with your fingers. The right hand is held over the breast. Okay, so you, you, you see here basically how uh, he's presenting uh, the temple and what he's doing. We, we also know this, uh, this sign given, which actually is enter a practice side in Freemasonry, which was uh, then taken by, by Crowley, because the first three degrees of the OTO originally were very much resembling Freemasonry. Then things changed in the OTO. Uh, but Crowley rewrote basically all the rituals uh, between uh, the time he became a member and later on when he took control of the order in the middle of the 20s when he was elected uh, as Grandmaster after the death of Theodore Royce. However, 
it's a little bit strange what happened uh, because not everybody accepted the law of Telema, not everybody wanted the rituals to be transformed in this way. And Crowley wanted to convince everybody after his uh, uh, revelation in Egypt in 1904 that everybody had to embrace this uh, this new uh, religion which he claimed to have uh, been uh, bestowed on uh, by this uh, mysterious uh, entity in Egypt you know and he was the new prophet of the law of Telema this guy here is uh, James Wasserman this guy what here what are they gonna do uh, they are of course proceeding uh, towards uh, uh, doing uh, the, uh, the, the, the Gnostic uh, uh, the Gnostic mass but uh, what I wanted to do here was in the meantime also uh, uh, showing you something else something that really makes us understand why the OTO is a Sabbatean Frankist creation and it's actually something you can find out very easily yourself so let's go back to the, the official website. You scroll down all the various characters that, of course, made the, the OTO, uh, all the way to McMartry uh, leadership uh, that then uh, gave in to uh, other Bill Edric, uh, Sabasius, and, of course, uh, uh, Imenus uh, Beta, which is William Breeze, the current uh, OHO of the OTO. In any case, uh, in the notes of the introduction, here you have the Hermetic Brotherhood of Light, because they call themselves also the Hermetic Brotherhood of Light. The Hermetic Brotherhood of Light, what is the Hermetic Brotherhood of Light? That this is one of the foundations on which they created the OTO. It's a mystical society which claimed descent from the late 18th century Austrian Masonic Rosicrucian body known as the Frates Lucis. The Frates Lucis were also known as the Asiatic Brethren or Initiatic Brethren of the Seven Cities in Asia. That is basically the cousin of Jacob Frank. Uh, hmm. As I explained in volume 9 of my confession, the guy... Uh, and, and, and this is a very interesting because uh, there is a direct connection and you can actually find this direct connection publicized but those who don't know the history of the Asiatic Brethren and don't know that it was actually the cousin of Jacob Frank uh, who founded this body they will not know it but of course if you study uh, you know if you study text that uh, pertain to the history of the Ordo Tempi Orientis, you might find that out. In fact, not only you have a reference uh, on, the, uh, on the actual uh, uh, website, official website of the U.S. Grand Lodge of the OTO, but you also have uh, references uh, to the Sabbatean, uh, the link to Sabbatean Frankism, in a book uh, by an ex bishop of uh, the Ecclesia Gnostica Cattolica, ex Haile the sound went we are back with the sound sound for some reason the sound went mm -hmm. I don't know. I see it from the video uh, maybe it muted the, uh, I think we are back I think you can follow us now can you hear us let me see let me see if the sound is back let's make a sound check here what what what, what, what one two three it seems Pretty like we're back we're back we're back we're back <laughs> okay so Let's continue uh, listening to the presentation of the OTO, the official presentation of the OTO. Crowley introduced the law of Thelema to OTO in the early decades of the 20th century. But without his leadership, the order went into a dormant period for the 30 years following his death. Starting in the 1970s, surviving members began to reorganize. 
and growth has been fairly steady ever since. There are now thousands of active members organized in over 40 different countries worldwide. The United States is one of five with a Grand Lodge or national section. OTO includes two outer rites or systems of ceremony for the purpose of realizing the divine in the human. The first of these is Ecclesia Gnostica Catholica, a church body whose central ritual is a symbolic drama called the Gnostic Mass, intended to cultivate religious ecstasy without moralizing or superstition. Since the Book of the Law affirms that every man and every woman is a star, our church requires priestesses as well as priests. The clergy organize group ceremonies, but we do not serve as intermediaries between the individual and his or her God. And so this is what they do during the Gnostic Mass. After the preparation here of Basim, and there will be other, of course, uh, uh, moments in the ritual. We will not be able to show them all, but we will show you something. The lady here usually it's naked. Now they cover her up, but usually the lady sitting down is naked. Lord visible and sensible, of whom this earth is but a frozen spark, turning about thee with annual and diurnal motion. Source of light, source of life, let thy perpetual radiance hearten us to continual labor and enjoyment, so that as we are constant partakers of thy bounty, we may in our particular orbit give out light and life, sustenance and joy to them that revolve about us without diminution of substance or effulgence forever. Oh man, the dark characters in these masses, dark energy in these masses for sure. Mm. <laughs> the most important form of deity in Philema is the Algoides, personal genius or holy guardian angel, which is understood to be unique for each individual. A person baptized in the church affirms I will know my own will. I will do my own will. I will rejoice in the will of my God. The other outer right of OTO is Mysteria. Well, uh, let's, uh, let's remember that uh, the yes. motto in the high degrees is uh, God is man, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Deus is Tomo, uh, God is man. So it's like they are definitely trying to become or imitate gods. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, they are also very much uh, supporters of transhumanism, of transgenderism, of transforming the human being into something different. Uh, their, uh, their whole thing of do what thou wilt should be their, uh, the whole of the law. It's a philosophy that really expands on this concept of bringing the will uh, to, 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 to levels of no matter what, you know, I mean, no matter what happens, they, they, they are uh, there focusing on their will, which is over everything else. Hmm. In any case, uh, let's show our viewers uh, how the OTO has basically based their system on Freemasonry, this is, of course, uh, something uh, that uh, uh, not everybody has access to. So, see how they have uh, this Minerva, they have uh, this uh, English, uh, this first degree, which is compared to an English Entered Apprentice Mason, add the red triangle. Here, they describe also a little bit the insignia, including this uh, insignia here, uh, which is for the fourth degree which actually I have an image that I can show you uh, guys so you can have an idea of how 
these uh, people dress up in the lodge because of course they are very different from how they dress up in Freemasonry. What they well in traditional Freemasonry they picked up actually from continental masonry the fact that they covered their clothes clothes with a black cloak, but they also use that uh, that thing to to cover themselves. And um, let me see if I can because I'm having today a little bit of. Uh, problems here with the stuff of this yeah. sorry guys we don't have a great technical means but we try to do our best <laughs> okay so let me show you here the uh, OTO uh, fourth degree paraphernalia here between uh, the apron and everything else that they wear it's pretty dark I showed this in uh, volume five of my confessions if you want to know more about it you can of course go on volume five of my confessions but as you can see there is this reference to uh, to the name oto the string triangle that is upside down here um, the candidate is basically becoming a perfect initiate in the eyes of the order and then you are basically, when you reach the fifth degree, you can, uh, you know, I mean, when you reach the fourth, you can petition for the fifth degree. And then from the fifth degree onwards, you have power also, electoral power within the system of the OTO. The system of the OTO is a little bit different from Freemason. It's not lodges immediately. For people, if you have a small number of people, you have what is known as uh, a camp. Uh, which is uh, only a few people, then it becomes an oasis, and then it becomes later on a lodge if you have more people. And so once it becomes a lodge, then it becomes participant uh, to the structure of the Grand Lodge, which works, uh, the Grand Lodge works as a sovereign sanctuary in which you get initiated to the seven, eight, nine, the higher degrees. Uh, so, uh, let me show you a little bit here this uh, uh, other image, which is uh, kind of uh, interesting because they even have an education committee in the Ordo Templi Orientis. And when uh, a few years back, me and Christy published this, uh, because I, I had, of course, uh, a couple of uh, problems with the OTO, even before I published uh, volume one of my confessions, uh, the, this is the educational committee of the OTO with an owl, very, very illuminati. But when uh, um, I was about to publish volume one of my confessions, because Brad Olsen, who was the publisher of, of this book here, um, he, he, of course, knew my story because he was about to publish it. Mm -hmm. They had not read the book yet, but Lomar Duquette, who is, uh, so I think, is deputy grandmaster of the OTO and is one of their uh, big authors and researchers. Uh, Lomar Duquette was also one of the first members uh, to uh, join the modern OTO once it started to be structured in the 1970s uh, again. And uh, he called up the publisher, Brad Olson, and he actually said, well, what did he say? He said, uh, you shouldn't publish Zagam. I don't know, he talked to you. <laughs> no, well, he said, basically, you shouldn't publish Zagami's books. Uh, he was You're locked. Not... I was a nutcase. <laughs> not... uh, basically, I was locked up in a mental asylum in Norway. And, and he said, well, actually, he has written all this in his book. He has told everybody about his own experience with the OTO. He has showed the documents. He has also showed the, the fact that uh, locking him up also in Norway, there was actually also members of the OTO involved. Mm -hmm. And so then uh, um, Duket uh, had to basically back off. Uh, and later, the back, yeah. <laughs> the back, yeah. But later on, we published uh, a book. Uh, and uh, because we had included some, uh, we had showed some things, including, I think, maybe the, the cover of the International Camp and Oasis Handbook, which is top secret, mm. they were uh, retaliating and they forced us to, to, to bring the book down. We had to republish it, and we eventually republished it as volume five 
uh, of my confession. This is uh, the secret handbook, the International Camp Oasis and Lodge Masses Handbook. It's only given to the people who are in charge of the system. So it tells you how you have to, you see, signed by the uh, Imenus Beta, which is the Frater Superior of the Ordo Tempi Orientis, which is William Brees. Uh, it explains uh, all this, uh, all this bureaucracy uh, because this is mainly bureaucratic. It doesn't have anything. I mean, it has something relating to the initiation, but mostly is about fees, uh, how the certificates, the initiations, uh, and then you have uh, all the bylaws, the confidentiality. So the confidentiality is very interesting because it shows how there is maximum secret kept in their lodges. There also, this is the prices, you see, for the various degrees. They have all their fees. So they have all these fees for the various, and then it says uh, the payment of dues. Of course, everybody who has been in Freemasonry knows, or in any fraternal body, knows that these things uh, at times uh, uh, are necessary for, of course, conducting uh, uh, an order or a fraternity or anything, even a club. But uh, uh, regarding the confidentiality, here is where the OTO is quite particular. So I wanted Christy to uh, read this uh, uh, about the confidentiality membership information. Please, Christy. Uh, <clears throat> membership of any individual in OTO shall not be made known to the public. Those who have not signed a preliminary pledge form except upon the informed consent of the member. The OTO membership and mailing lists are only released to those OTO officers who have a specific need for such information. However, a public claim or denial of membership by an individual is deemed consent for the OTO to publicly discuss the membership or non-membership of that individual to the same extent as the individual's public claim or denial. In general, any degree held by a member should only be revealed to other members who hold a degree in the same triad. PIs may reveal their rank to Minervals and what is that? What yeah, it's first it initiates. And um, um, what is that? They reveal the rank to Minervals and seventh degrees. Oh, seventh degree may reveal the rank to fifth degree. Fifth degree knights of the east and west should be known as princes of Jerusalem, except to other knights of the east and west. It's very confusing. <laughs> A certain amount of degree confidentiality may be forfeited by those who assume leadership positions. For example, most Minervals know that lodge masters must be at least. Fifth degree, degree, and that persons acting as sovereign grand inspectors generally general must be at least um, seventh. seventh degree. Note that use of electronic ma mail to provide information to international headquarters should be done in such a way that privacy of the members is assured. And of course, so there is confidentiality on the meeting, the proceeding and minutes of the official meetings of all the governing bodies of the OTO are confidential, unless for this specific. The ritual stuff is more interesting. <laughs> then you have uh, confidential documents. So OTO consider its initiation rituals and official instruction documents to its degree, particularly those of the seventh, eight, nine, and 10 to be confidential. Of course, confidential, because then uh, you are uh, Communicated secrets like, uh, I mean, human sacrifice. It, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like uh, something that actually is true. I mean, uh, and it's quite shocking. Uh, I want to show you um, always uh, amongst this, uh, this material that I have, uh, just a second, we have here also a OTO Psychology Guild. Oh, lovely. I mean, uh, how can they have an OTO psychology guild? Uh, it's kind of uh, pretty far out. Uh, but uh, uh, I actually uh, experienced myself how these people in the daytime claim themselves to be psychiatrists. They are actually psychiatrists, psychologists, and so on. And so they like to manipulate the mind of people. And that's why they have a psychology guild within the Ordo Templi Orientis. But we have also other things that I wanted to uh, share uh, with you because, uh, of course, uh, the, uh, there is uh, 
various branches of the OTOs we, with, of the OTO, but also various lineages. Now, there is the only one that calls itself OTO is the Caliphate because they have started uh, this incessant uh, uh, war from the 70s to the 90s to get everything copyrighted and basically have recognized the fact that they are the only legitimate OTO. Um, I have, uh, of course, an experience directly myself within the OTO because uh, I was a member for, uh, for a period of time. And while I was a member, I also petitioned for the fifth at one point uh, here. Why you do that? Here's the petition for the fifth. As uh, I was also, I became an eighth degree. I will show now the. What? Everybody wants to know what kind of things you did bad in the OTO. Everybody wants to know. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everybody wants to know. Okay, there is a lot that uh, that can be said. Uh, also, because I'm quite open, uh, as you know, I don't uh, I don't uh, hide anything. But uh, most of it, as you know, is already in my books, so it's quite detailed. Uh, I can definitely talk to you about. Uh, I want to show also my. I want to show here. Let, let me see if I can uh, find. Did you have some other name? Yes, I had an initiatic name, which what was, was Frater Lumen Elementis Audience. Uh, and it was a name which I actually found in a book from uh, Cesare de la Rivera, I think, uh, the, the World of Magical Heroes. Uh, and Frater Lumen. Ooh. Frater Lumen, Frater Lumen Elementis Audience. I don't like any of that. Because, you see, Lumen Elementis Audience, when you pick up the initial, was Leo, L-E-O. Uh, and it was the light that comes from the Orient, you know? and 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 this was basically uh, my charter that came. But as you can see, it was connected also to uh, to Michael Bertiot to what is uh, not to, the, what is known as the uh, Haitian Franco Haitian Templars, which is basically the OTOA. Uh, Michael Bertiot is, uh, uh, of course, and, and, and I was picked up from the OTO and brought into this context because they, they said you need to receive this higher degree. You are here in the midst of these people which are a low understanding. We want to bring you to a higher degree. Uh, but then, I, of course, I understood there is a whole lot uh, of factions at that time in the late 90s, early 2000s were fighting with each other in the OTO. And so there was uh, expulsions, people, uh, did, at one point they opened up the Albion OTO in London, some people who used to be uh, with me in the Fraternita Rosa Cruciana Antigua. There was, of course, Kenneth Grant. Kenneth Grant because at one point, Kenneth Grant was uh, Crowley's secretary, who had worked for Crowley, who had uh, actually who did magic with Alistair Crowley, he uh, had opened a lodge in the 1950s, a lodge that uh, claimed, though, some very particular kind of practices compared to the more traditional. He wanted to bring the OTO in the age of ufology. He wanted to communicate with this uh, serious current. He said that he, he wanted to communicate with the serious current, uh, of course, uh, uh, then uh, there was this guy who Crowley had made his uh, the person responsible in America, which was Carl Germer, uh, which we saw before. And Carl Germer, uh, he didn't really like what happened uh, with uh, with uh, with uh, Kenneth Grant. And so at one point, then he would be kicked out from the OTO, but he didn't care. He continued his own OTO, which will become the Tifonian OTO. But going back to Carl Germer, which we discussed before, just so you understand that everything that I'm telling you is based, based on fact, not, not on fiction here, of course. Uh, when, it, when it says Germer studied in university and work as military intelligence, it's just because these are facts, not, I repeat fiction and and so 
Uh, here we don't speculate. Here we, we, we try to, like I do in my books, uh, follow the legitimate sources to unveil then the secrets. Uh, somebody says, don't forget the solar temple. Ma solar temple here uh, is not pertain to the OTO in this case, more maybe to the uh, also Amork. Amork and the OTO seem to have a very early connection in the days of Alistair Crowley. Now, we all know that uh, Amork these days probably will not like uh, to be associated in any way with, uh, uh, with the OTO because the, the OTO has a more sinister kind of image and Amork a more new agey one. But in reality, there is documents that uh, show the link between H. Spencer Lewis and, uh, and, and, and Crowley and the OTO. And, and this, uh, of course, there is a whole controversy here. They talk about this controversy. The relationship between Lewis and Theodore Royce is well known. And Theodore Royce uh, was the, the, the guy who was in charge of the OTO before, uh, before Alistair Crowley. And then what happened? Well, uh, things were not really going so well because Crowley, at the end of the, you know, uh, in the early 1920s, really, Crowley was really pushing this whole Telema thing. And uh, Theodore Royce didn't like it. But suddenly Theodore Royce has a heart attack and dies. And uh, Crowley claims to be his heir. Now, not everybody accepted this whole claim to the airship, but there was a guy in Germany, in Thuringia, who uh, decided uh, that uh, Crowley was, you know, he liked the, the Telema, the, a faction of the OTO in Germany didn't like it, a faction liked it. And the faction that liked it invited Crowley, who had been kicked out of the Abbey of Telema in Sicily at that point by Mussolini, who had some problems uh, after the death of one of his disciples, who had uh, drunk the blood of a, of a cat after a sacrifice. And so there was uh, this, whole, uh, this whole problem here. But uh, let's go back to see instead the official presentation of the OTO. Maxima, a set of graduated initiations using the methods of Freemasonry and the ancient mystery cults. Fraternal temple initiation in person may seem somewhat antiquated, and indeed the heyday of such work in the United States was the late 1800s. But living 21st century lives in smartphones and video displays deprives us of many of the contacts and sensory channels that previously would have integrated us into age-old networks of human consciousness. The OTO degrees redress these faults while developing self-discipline and self-knowledge towards the goals of individual liberty and universal brotherhood. Another important but still largely unrealized dimension of OTO is the establishment of intentional communities centered on profess houses. Crowley briefly operated such a project, the Abbey of Thalema in Cefalu in the 1920s. And late in life, he was making plans for another to be called the Green Lion, which never came to fruition. The creative opportunity to bring such communities into existence is important, however, to the Thelemic movement as a whole. The Thelemic movement, uh, I mean, guys, the, the, the amount of depravities that went on at the Abbey of Thelem in Sicily, I think. Uh, oh, oh, Saint your poor, your yeah. poor um, cameraman, he went there and after he had very bad misfortunes. Yeah, my cameraman ended up filming. Uh, I told him not to get it. Uh, everybody who uh, went, like, everybody inside, uh, went. inside uh, the, the Abbey was cursed. I mean, you can't go within the, the grounds of the Abbey of Telem in Sicily. It's, it's a cursed place. In, in, in any case, uh, we are talking today about uh, the sector to cover Freemasonry. So let's start the last phase, the, the phase of the takeover, to explain how they took over Freemasonry, because otherwise, 
people would be implying that we're just making speculations. Instead, this is a much more serious matter and needs to be addressed in a serious way. Well, uh, um, like I said, when it comes down to uh, uh, Alistair Crowley, he uh, had a very dubious Masonic history. He went uh, to Mexico in the, 19, uh, in the year 1900, I think, 19, 1901. He was initiated by this uh, Don Jesus Medina. This uh, guy he was an aristocrat. He had his own Supreme Council. He was an irregular body. Though he came back to Europe, he couldn't make anybody recognize him. And so he went to uh, a guy, Reverend the Lion from the Lion family, who actually was uh, the representative. I don't know. I think the organist there. Uh, he, he was uh, a guy who was connected to the English embassy in Paris, basically. And in any case, he brought Crowley to this lodge of the Grand Lodge de France. But the Grand Lodge de France itself was also in that period becoming irregular. So Crowley was basically getting into an obedience. Uh, that uh, will not hold any regularity. In any case, he remained active within the frames of uh, institutionalized Freemason until 1908. Later on, as uh, I write in, and I publish also the document in Volume 9 of my Confessions, he, he, he actually acquires a patent from John Yarker and he enters into the world of fringe masonry, which I think is uh, probably more, more su was more suitable for him. Um, when it came down to being elected, uh, Alistair Crowley as the head of the OTO, he uh, relied very much on this guy called Henrik Tranker in Leipzig, who uh, was a bookseller in Germany, who was connected with other uh, German Illuminati, like uh, uh, Eugen Grosch, like Arnold Krumheller. And uh, it was actually Germer also who met with uh, Eric Tranker in Leipzig. And so uh, we can say that basically when uh, uh, with Germer uh, uh, started to work uh, for Crowley, he was actually initially uh, connected with this Eric Tranker. And uh, in 1923, Germer sold uh, his house uh, and uh, in, in Vienna, moved to Munich uh, in order to publish the magazine Pan Sophia together with Otto William Barth and Tranker. And this was really the early stages of, uh, like I said, of the OTO. It says here, in 1925, while visiting Germany, Crowley first stayed at Tranker's home, but soon moved to Germers in the same year. And that was the period in which Crowley managed to get, to be accepted as the leader of the OTO and push his own brand, uh, because he changes even the initiation ritual by inserting this telema element, telemic element. Before Crowley, the rituals of the OTO were more uh, Gnostic Christians. It was defined as an international order of Gnostics, uh, Gnostic Christian Masons. They were not uh, Gnostics who, uh, though, were Neo-Gnostics, of course, that were connected to that. You remember we discussed that revival of Gnosticism. And actually, if you want to know more, Volume 9 of my Confessions, you can, uh, of course, know more also about how uh, Neo-Gnosticism uh, reconstituted itself uh, in France. Uh, but uh, let's move further because, of course, uh, we have the takeover of Freemasonry here, which is more important. And the takeover of Freemasonry started really from the moment in which in the late 70s, early 80s, Freemasonry was already in a stage of, in a situation of crisis in the early 80s. There was the scandal of the P2, the rock, the world and everything. But in that period, in Germany, the OTO was starting to, the Caliphate OTO that had founded itself had brought itself together in 1977 in Berkeley as a Grand Lodge for the first time, had started to initiate a large number of people also in Europe. And among these people, there was also the Italian representative Alberto Moscato. There was people, of course, that would be initiated from Scandinavia. 
There will be, of course, various Scandinavian branches that will become more and more active, especially in Gothenburg, but also in Bergen, especially in Bergen, in Norway, and also in Oslo. So the OTO started to expand, and they didn't only expand with your average got kind of, you know, that they will only live in the first degrees, you know, mingling in the first mm -hmm. degrees those kind of people will be basically probably in their life never achieving any degrees above fourth degree uh, or what happened was that uh, they were starting to infiltrate the lodges of Freemason they the first guy to do that uh, was the Italian Alberto Moscato who became the younger guy also to achieve at age 40 the 33rd degree before I achieved the 33rd degree as, and I was only 23, but I was the youngest ever. And he was, before me, the youngest ever at 40. Alberto Moscato, who uh, later on died, I met him in Rome, um, I participated with him to a uh, session of his lodge, which was the Chem Lodge, was basically a guy who was also very close to the Vatican, to Massimo Introvigne, who had links with the Jesuits. So, uh, and uh, apparently Alberto Moscato said that, to me at least, he said that um, Introvigne was renting him the apartment. So, um, the uh, question with the layman, the symbol of the OTO that you see, is different from the symbol of the, uh, of the AA that you see instead in. Here. This is the symbol of the AA, but the AA or the OTO are two different organizations. The AA is a completely different organization, which is usually Chela to, uh, it's a mentorship kind of organization where you are on top of, uh, basically you, you, you have a system in which uh, the disciple progresses as your superior progresses in this uh, uh, in system which is made out of mentorship. While instead the OTO, it's a completely different ball game. It's a paramasonic order. It's a system that bestows initiations that also uh, give you uh, instructions and give you inter new interpretation, of course, to symbol and mysteries. And you have various uh, uh, parts of uh, this uh, system. I have uh, uh, written down here maybe um, let me see, because I had written down. And I wanted to show the modern Freemasons that are OTO members, high degree OTO members, like this guy. This guy is a professor at Gothenburg University, but he is Eric Bogdan. This guy is a high level Freemason in the Swedish right, and he's a typical example of Masonic infiltration here we are. This guy here. Harry Bogdan, like I said, he, he teaches at the religious study department, uh, the religious uh, um, department of religious studies of the University of, Go of Gothenburg, which is one of the most prestigious universities in Sweden. But he is also the head of his lodge for the OTO. And he is uh, best friends with Carl Abramson, uh, who is, of course, uh, also was linked with uh, Anton LaVey. But I also wanted to show you uh, how this guy is like really high level. And this is a document, I mean, this is a publication from a few years ago. Now, in the Swedish right where you don't have that many degrees, he was already a seventh degree back then when this uh, uh, publication came out. And he's talking here. You see how they monopolize. They don't pick up everybody mm -hmm. in Freemason. They pick up the ones who have more knowledge. Like, for example, Eric Bogdan from the Swedish Right. Swedish Right is a system where, that has only 11 degrees. The seventh degree is considered a very high up degree. Nowadays, probably, is a ninth degree. And he wrote this essay in an official uh, about introduction to the high degrees of Freemasonry, you can see. And he talks about uh, all the various degrees of Freemasonry with a lot of knowledge and all that, uh, very much uh, details and, and all the rest. Not talking, of course, about, he talks about all the various degrees, but he doesn't talk about the OTO, because in this 
situation, the OTO is infiltrating Freemasonry with people like, like this guy, okay. who are knowledgeable, academic. Mm -hmm. In fact, where did I meet this guy? I met this guy during uh, uh, an event. I actually I met him earlier uh, at an OTO event in Norway. And then I met him again at the Canterbury Masonic Research Center that now doesn't exist anymore, but used to be a very prestigious. Uh, you met a lot of pretty dark characters in that library. You were hanging out with the old <laughs> ladies and the dark characters. Uh, here, but I was part of it. I was uh, the Duke, uh, I was, I mean, the uh, Marquis of Northampton who put me there with these people. I thought it was a respectful thing. Oh, lovely. <laughs> lovely, <laughs> darling. And we were in the tower of the Canterbury Masonic uh, Tower. It used to be the building where uh, Sir Francis Bacon used to live. Man, it was, uh, you could tell I was in your girlfriend. <laughs> okay, well, in any case, uh, going back uh, to, uh, you know, because people say uh, OTO is not Freemasonry. No, the OTO is infiltrating Freemasonry. There was uh, this guy here, for example, Simon Kane, who was the head of uh, the lodge, uh, of the Tabula Rasa Lodge in London. I don't know now, probably he's a high-level initiate in the OTO, but he was also a very high-level member of uh, the United Grand Lodge of England. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I don't know. <laughs> I know. I don't know. Just, but in any case, okay. this and my that, belt fell off. Here, my here I am. Oh, now, that's just lovely. Here I am in a lodge of the United Kingdom Lodge of England. I love the look. Watch. I, I was uh, at the day of my initiation in the United Kingdom Lodge of England, and next to me there was the National Grand Secretary of 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 the. You know, this guy was at the Atlantis bookshop when we went. Remember? <laughs> Remember? Oh! This uh, Stephen Schofield. He was there? Yeah, I recognized him. He he, was I don't there? think he recognized him. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, those him. creeps in there. It was so And bad. this is Tony Henley, who is a very high level Martinist. He's not OTO, but this guy is an, uh, used to be at the, at the time the national secretary of the OTO. In, I in can tell that nobody was feeding you back then. No one. <laughs> what are we eating? <laughs> Cats? <laughs> no, come on. I know you never ate any animals or anything. No, you didn't sacrifice I didn't, anything, I or I wouldn't be with you. And you never hurt any any human or anything like you know, that. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, of course, I asked you right away. What are all the bad things you did? But he got out before. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, like for example, at our lodge meetings. Uh, and then were, they put a bunch of hexes on you when you This left. this was really. Yeah, this was really far out. 11 days after, and I talk about it in volume one, my, 11 days after the 11th of September, the Tabula Rasa, which means Ground Zero Lodge of the OTO in London, because Tabula Rasa means Ground Zero, Fratelli da Slugis. That's Ermen. so messed up. I don't eh? even want to talk what? about it because it's like September what? 9th today. And, so, even and we are on the. Nearly, uh, and what's she? That's so wrong. 11, 11 is the key of all rituals in the, in the, in the Crowley tradition. I remember he told me that, and I yeah. did not believe him. I said, I do not. What did I say? <laughs> I do not. I do not. I said some Bush thing. Like, I do not. Support I was, terrorists. No, I was like that with terrorists. Okay, but this is uh, official. This is official stuff. And, it took and look where it took place, because it took place next to the headquarters of MI6 in London. I think I even have the, the, the map here because you, back then you didn't used to have the GPS. You know? So you publish the map for arriving at the, at the place where we do the ritual. Watch this. Huh? And, if, like you, this and if you go and see the map, you're gonna see that it was basically very close here, the Bonington Center, Vauxhall Grove here. And then if you go here and you go and check where it is, Kennington Hall and all this, uh, the bridge there is the bridge that uh, basically connects uh, and you have the MI6 headquarters, you know, Vauxhall Bridge, and then you have the MI6 headquarters on the side. Oh. Let me show people. So it's... Uh, uh, 
Let me, let me see if I can show show our viewers. Uh, in the meantime, welcome to the Leo Zagami show. Here we are. The CIS building, uh, they call it, no? Voxel. Uh, here, I put it. It was basically next to this place. So this, I'm gonna show. Did we go over there? Yes, we passed there, I think. Here, let me see. I'm not sure. Did we pass there? I'm not sure if I uh, brought it to the. I think we, did. I mean, we might have. Oh, eh? no. uh, here, this is basically next. The building uh, is uh, was here. You see. I show you the map and basically the voxel bridge and then you have this the james yeah. bond building Sis, secret intelligence. No, I would you, remember I, it. <laughs> but if you go here no i don't think we passed that but no. we passed actually not too far from there and this is uh, basically you see a whole thing and i was uh, just showing you because of course people you know Think I'm kidding. I wanted to, uh, you know, show. And by the way, I went mm. into Atlantic Bookshop in um, England, and I had to leave. It was so. I went to the back of the bookshop, and they had this big bathmat. And then I got sick, and I had to run out, and I threw up in the street. True yeah, story. I mean, it was really weird. <laughs> True story. In any case, uh, when. Uh, uh, basically, you know, and I ate Chinese food too. It wasn't pretty. I had just gotten done eating at that <laughs> nice restaurant, and then he took me there and uh, I puked in the road. Okay, but uh, what I wanted to go back Sorry. is when I denounced the infiltration of Freemasonry, uh, and, and here is instead uh, Martin Pistar who is uh, one of the high-level Freemasons here in the United States. So it's uh, like uh, uh, we talked about Eric Bogdan, but I want to show also a co-respective here in the U.S. that local Masons can, you know, be acquainted with. Uh, he's a very famous Masonic historian, author. Martin Pistar is uh, the typical representative of today's leftist, uh, progressive uh, OTO infiltrated within Freemasonry. This is the typical guy. So it doesn't look like really an evil guy got. It looks like your typical lip tab. That's how it is. They have dark eyes and no souls. But you're watching the Leo Zegami show, the only show that uh, exposes the Illuminati and in this way. I mean, uh, we of course want to thank those people who have helped the show. Christy, please, okay. uh, let's thank uh, a sponsor because today really without you guys we will not be on the air yeah that's true okay so we have holly and donald and judge seal whole name holly Aureus, donald beach daniel estes jerry ronju kirsten rock thomas birmingham joe linford bruce kodish and harvest simon thank you very much you guys are great. Thank you, guys. And if you Thomas want to, you. and of course, if you want to help us, you can do it with GoFundMe or also with the Cash App. So that let me also put on the screen now for the last few minutes of our show also Cash App as we are explaining. In the meantime, though, I wanted to ask Christy, what do you think of the OTO so far? <sighs> I think everybody knows I've been making faces this whole time. <laughs> yeah? I don't think I even need to say anything. You don't need to say anything? No, right? that makes me puke. <laughs> okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. I just can't believe that you were, like, part of that. I don't understand, like, I know you were, like, doing research and infiltrating stuff, but I just, I just find it very dark. I want to show something. Uh, <laughs> let me. Here we are. Now, uh, I just found this, uh, and this was written by the author of this book, Lom Milo Doguet, uh, which is one of the highest uh, people in the OTO. 
And uh, listen, this is what uh, he wrote many years ago. We're talking about uh, over uh, 20 years ago. To my brother Leo, together we will rule the world. Hell yes, you are a chicken cabalist. <laughs> See, they wanted you on their side, so then you know they would have more of course, power. Of course. But then you're now you're when you met me, you came to the good side of the force. So absolutely, <laughs> I mean it's 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 really it's really fueled with the leftists, uh, and uh, when I tried to fight them uh, within uh, United Guernsey of England, the Freemasonry, I was the one who, who ended up being expelled. I was the one who was called. Uh, in front of a Masonic tribunal. Of course, uh, I completely rejected this uh, proposal. Uh, they had uh, uh, set this appeal uh, court also for me at the United Geology of England headquarters back then. Uh, it said uh, uh, basically an appeal then for her that you be expelled from the craft. Oh, no. Oh, expel me, expel me. So this was, and then they, they made a big thing about it with all this official documentation and so on. And all this because the OTO had the members of the OTO within the United Lodge of England. They were against me. The moment in which they saw that I was uh, infiltrating here, there was all this official big, uh, you know, big people that had originated the civil communication that would bring information to this report. I was basically saying that they would be infiltrated by the OTO and they should do something about it. And actually, John, there was the... Our emphasis on the liberty of the individual. Like in fact, the liberty of the individual. Uh, I was being uh, somebody who was actually denouncing that they had no freedom whatsoever. The guy who had uh, exposed me was basically a guy who wanted to kick me out of uh, Freemasonry after I had uh, exposed the whole OTO system as being dangerous and as being uh, an organization that had the aims of infiltrating. And that's why at one point uh, I, because I was participating with the, the, like I explained all this in volume one of my confessions, yeah, for those who are interested, they can check and they can read the whole story. Uh, I was basically uh, infiltrating uh, for the, uh, and, and here you have also, of course, all the various documents that we just show or shown. I was basically infiltrating the Societa, the sorry, the, the OTO to expose those people who, from the OTO, had infiltrated the Società Rosicruciana in Anglia, which is a Rosicrucian fraternity, which I, as head, of the Fraternity of Rosa Cruciana Antigua had a responsibility to communicate uh, my discovery. So I was actually exposing these uh, people because they were infiltrating a Christian, uh, supposedly Christian organization. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so if you want to know more about it, there is uh, this whole chapter here. Uh, and and, and it, I think it kind of gives you a good idea of uh, of the whole thing uh, uh, and, and the, all the, the evidence about the OTO, UGLE, United Kingdom of England connection. They should have never kicked me out. They should have rather kicked kicked uh, kicked them out. Yeah. Robert Gilbert was the guy who basically uh, called me to do this uh, investigation. In, uh, together with uh, the uh, communication representative of uh, the uh, American Lodge of England, which uh, was a uh, uh, very important figure at that time. Robert Gilbert was the worshipful master of uh, the uh, Quote Coronati Lodge, which is like the top lodge of research in England and in the world, actually, for Freemasonry. Everybody is always very... Uh, you know, when they get their stuff published by the Coda Coronati, like recently also Joseph Wages, is very prestigious for, uh, for Freemasons. Now, I uh, was called by this uh, Robert Gilbert to do this investigation, and what I found out uh, was actually then uh, evidence that this uh, guy, which I showed you before, Simon Kane, was in charge of... Uh, their own infiltration of the UGLE in England. 
Sounds like a James Bond character, Simon Kane. <laughs> Well, I mean, look at him. I mean, when, when actually I went to this uh, to take uh, this photo that day, the United Lodge of England people were like uh, people from intelligence services from Vauxhall. Oh, yeah. And my six would say, yeah. be careful, don't drink anything. You can be poisoned. They will kill you. This was the kind of uh, preface to my visit uh, that day before this photo. I knew Simon. He had been to my home. I knew him for years. So I wasn't really scared, but they said, be careful because he might kill you. We were at the, the, the pub that is next to the headquarters of the United Kingdom Lodge of England in Great Queen Street. So, And, and so I remember uh, they, 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 they called me and they said, ah, be careful that uh, you know these people might attempt your life. So I was definitely risking my life at that time. But uh, I wasn't, you know, I, I had... Uh, been introduced to British Freemasonry, I had uh, been introduced by some of the most eminent people in British Freemasonry. These were my mentors uh, in British Freemasonry, and none of them had anything to do with the OTO. I can show this. This is the welcome part, the proposal, the sanctuary, and the mentor. And as you can see, Tony Henley, Christopher, and then Julian Rees, who is a very well-known figure within the Masonic world. These were all people uh, very respected with Freemasonry, but they were not OTO. Um, and like I said, Robert Gilbert uh, had uh, also written, and uh, let me see here, this document uh, later on to justify the situation that then uh, went on and shaped up. Here you have some reading maybe to do, Christy, and it's very important uh, because uh, it's a document of great importance from Robert Gilbert. Which is an author also. Uh, here, as you can see, the document, just I want to show the document, is uh, The Trials of Masonic Apologies, written by Worship of Brother Robert Gilbert, all these are the various titles, Past Master Quarter Coronati Lodge, number 2076, an editor of Ars Quarter Coronatorum, which is very, very important publication within. Freemasonry. Now, let me show everybody uh, what he says because he says something uh, uh, that uh, I think will shock a lot of people. And so I think uh, Christy will have a good read with this stuff. So, here, let me put it big so you can read it, Christy. <laughs> okay, thank you. Here. From the top? Here. From the web. Fundamentalist. Okay. okay. This is the document. Uh, let me put it on the screen uh, here also okay. for our viewers. Uh, and okay, you can read it from there. Fundamentalists invariably bring into their arguments the name of Aleister Crowley, magician, pervert, fraud, and the last of Freemason, albeit a very irregular Freemason. His antics and his beliefs have no hearing on Freemasonry and religion, and as a man firmly rejected by Grand Lodge, he could readily be dismissed from the argument. Until now, that is. Crowley was the head of an esoteric order, the Ordo Temp Templi Ord Orientis, which had and has a series of rituals involving sex magic and a theology based upon Crowley's Book of the Law. This particular holy book contains such edifying passages as the following. For uttering, which I must apologize. Oh, do I have to say this? Is this... I'm a secret, the fourfold word, the blasphemy against all gods of man, curse them, curse them, curse them, with hawks, head, the peck at the eyes of Jesus. Oh, As he hung upon the cross, I flap my wings in the face of Muhammad and blind him with my cross, I tear over the flesh of the Indian, the Buddhist, Mongol, and then the hasty man I spit on the crapless creeds. Let Mary in violet be torn upon me. Oh, For uh, her sake, let so cast women be utterly despised upon her. Among us, I mean, among us, uh, among you. Sorry, I mean, it's it's it's, it's of course terrible. You can now uh, uh, move on and read directly from the from what uh, Gilbert is writing. We can rightly dismiss this as, as an unpleasant adolescent rubbish, but members of the OTO take it seriously. They are also currently seeking in considerable numbers to be admitted into regular Freemasonry. Echo, uh, may this, this may be very clear to all the Masons who are watching us. We are not here making some conspiracy theory. This is an infiltration that is taking place and you are doing nothing about it to stop it. Please. Yeah. 
I can even read it again. They are also currently sinking in considerable numbers to be admitted into regular Freemasonry, and they wish to be obligated upon their own holy book, the book of the law. This has not happened and will not happen in this country, but some American Grand Lodges are rather less vigilant, or perhaps more lax in their interpretation of the words of good repute. It is reported... It is reported in news groups of Freemasonry that many of our OTO members have also joined craft masonry as well as ancient ascetic Scottish Rite. This was, of course, a citation he was doing to show the Freemasons how bad the situation is. In some Masonic jurisdiction, the volume of the sacred law for taking the oath by telemites has been liberal. The first one to do that was actually Lon Milo Duquette here in California when he was inducted into Freemasonry, initiated into Freemasonry, and then inducted into the ancient set of Scottish Rite, he used Liber Al as uh, the volume of the sacred law for taking the oath. And this is, uh, of course, scandalous, because this is in no way a holy book, but it's a blasphemous book. Mm -hmm. uh, in the recognition of the religious orientation of the OTO member applicants, they did this, and now here in California, they have really taken over the show, but uh, uh, continue with this part here. All, we, all, <clears throat> all that we can do is to continue to emphasize that Freemasonry does not demand a specific religious adherence, only that its members must believe in God, which term I must prefer to su supreme being, perhaps from an inherent horror at the thought that a supreme being encompasses also the notion of a goddess. We have no... Mm -hmm. Now, I would like, uh, though, to go back to this part here, uh, which I think needs to be read. I have dutifully drawn the state of affairs to the attention of Grand Lodge. He's intending the Grand Lodge of England, in his case, you know, doing. But when fundamentalist anti Mason unearth this, uh, as they surely will, we will be hard pressed to justify our inaction in not repudiating the Grand Lodge's concern. Guys, the, the Freemasons know very well they have uh, this very weak, weak spot, and they have done nothing to change things. Uh, there is this uh, system, of course, uh, uh, of, a free, uh, of a Freemasonry which uh, is accepting all this. Maybe a hundred years ago, Freemasons will never have accepted the state of things, but uh, the state of Freemasonry today accepts uh, what the OTO is doing. And I think that this is uh, truly scandalous. I think that uh, aside from the various debates that uh, we have, uh, of course, uh, surrounding the various forms of OTOs, the one that now, of course, is uh, claiming it's the only OTO is the one that at the same time is conducting a methodic and gradual infiltration of Freemasonry. And we have uh, ample, uh, how you say, uh, a lot of evidence of uh, of all this, but nobody's doing anything. The, 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 the some statistics concerning the international caliphate OTO diffusion are supplied in some publications. I have picked up these publications. They say that they have around three thousand members that are spread within forty-two countries now. People will say that 3,000 members can't change the world. How, however, almost 50% reside in the United States. So that already gives you, of those 3,000, 1,500 members here in the United States. Uh, there is uh, uh, members in Alabama, in Arizona, in Kansas, in California, in Colorado, in Connecticut, in Delaware, basically in every single state. And uh, in Europe, there are uh, about a thousand members, of whom uh, twenty-five percent, surprisingly, reside in the former Yugoslavia. There is, of course, members of the OTO also in Russia, as well as in Ukraine. And this uh, is something that I have investigated personally many years ago. So I hope that. Uh, Today, we have explained to you what the OTO is. Of course, you have uh, a series of degrees that people uh, 
can uh, go and check out and they can maybe they all look uh, nice and fancy and people will be curious i want to achieve this mysterious knowledge and whatnot but in the end guys this system actually brings you so much bad energy upon you uh, and in volume eight of my confessions i talk about all the people like peaches gandalf and other people who literally have been cursed by participating yes. to this kind of uh, work and i had to exercise myself i had to go to egypt i had to literally exercise myself several times to get away all these bad things uh, uh, that were bestowed upon me with the initiations so um gary lunchman is oto member in fact gary lunchman has uh, uh participated uh, i think introduced the book occultur of carl abramson these people are all part though of this uh, great infiltration of both freemasonry but also all the other esoteric orders if they can infiltrate other esoteric orders all your members will do it so i hope you understand uh, the danger for 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 our world because the values that they want to project are completely anti-christian and of course they have been the basis for the, uh, the birth for modern satanism because anton lavey was part of uh, of crowley's uh, uh, telemic fans here in northern california in the 60s uh, early 60s uh, in uh, uh, and then we have other people like michael aquino was another fan of uh, Alistair Crowley, they have produced their own monsters mm -hmm. you know, in the process. However, thank you so much for following us. Uh, this was the Leo Zagami Show Exploring the Illuminati Occult Part 32. We will be back next week with another great episode. Uh, and, 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 and of course, another great episode. We want to say what we'll be talking about next week, Christy, or we'll make a surprise? Um, make it a surprise. I don't okay. know because I forgot. <laughs> ah, okay, okay, that's fine. Okay, <laughs> please support the Leo Zagami show so we can bring you more shows uh, also in the coming weeks and month. And uh, uh, here we go. Rambo? Sleeping. Oh, okay. Rambo sleeping. Rambo? Sleeping. Ah, okay. Isn't he? He's sleeping. <laughs> oh, he's sleeping. He? No, he's dead. He's sleeping. Yes. Oh, I lied. <laughs> okay have a great weekend and a great week if you want to find also the old episodes uh -huh. of there exploring is. the illuminati occult go on youtube on the leo zagami show channel and and you will find them here is rambo hey he's, he's a trump supporter i don't i don't care what, what other people say trump uh, might have done some errors is not of course perfect but guys compared to what we have at the moment is another planet and he's really a guy who could uh, maybe save what is left of america in 2024 otherwise here is going to become really bad really bad <laughs>